I was born in Hungary, they call a little town Pasto. I had a beautiful family. We live peacefully. We have a beautiful life there. We don't bother nobody. Nobody bothered us, really. But the anti-Semitism was drum up, you know what I mean? I was only a little over 13 years old. We get in a camp. The German commandant say right away, you F Jews, none of you going to get out alive. It was a terrible life. Their aim was to kill you. Nothing to look forward, just when I going to be next. I was liberated by the 11 Armored Division. They break down the gate. And there we was. This was something you never forget. I have a debt to pay. So I made a promise. If the Lord help me, if I ever go to America, I'm going to become a G.I. Joe. Tibor Rubin did make it to America. And in 1950, despite a significant language barrier, he made good on his promise to become an American soldier. By the summer of that year, Rubin was on active duty near South Korea's Busan perimeter. There, Rubin made the harsh discovery that even the army that had liberated him from the Nazis was not free from prejudice. The first sergeant, when he found out I was Jewish, he said that, I cannot believe it, he said. Every time he needed a volunteer, so-called volunteer, he always called for me, say, get me that you know, Saruma bitch Hungarian Jew. This was me. One day he sent me up in a hill. There was all the foxhole all around. And he told me that the company and a third battalion gonna move back for a better place to defend ourselves. And he said that you're gonna be a guard. And he said, we're going to come back and pick it up. I figured they're going to come tomorrow. So I went every foxhole. I put a bunch of hand grenade. Then I have my M1 rifle. I load them down, a few of them. With them and put in some ammunition and a bunch of carbine. The clips, put them there. Because I have to show it. I have to sum the top, trick them, then more than one man guarding it. So what happened next day? There they come. Banzai, Banzai. Hell break loose. I was so scared, I went bananas. I was screaming, and I threw a hand grenade. Pulled the pen and boom, pulled the pen, boom. Then I shoot with my rifle, the M1. Then I shoot my carbine. Then I, I throw it all over. You become hysterical. 24 hours I was on over there. I prayed to Jesus, Mohammed, Moses, Buddha. I said, somebody get my ass out of here. This place is too tough, <laughs> too rough. You know what I mean? And somebody did that. Reuben single-handedly defended the hill for over 24 hours. He incapacitated or killed a staggering number of Korean troops and slowed the remaining force to a standstill. His regiment made a successful retreat, but his sergeant never returned to relieve him. Finally, you know, after a few days, I realized that, you know, nobody come or nothing. So I just walked down from the mountain, and there was loaded with dead and screaming North Koreans and everything. And you know, then I had the guilt feeling, what the hell I did here? You know, I said, this, 
I kill even the enemy, but I kill somebody's father, brother, and all that, you know. Thou shall not kill. But then again, the truth is that if I don't kill him, he kill me, and vice versa, you know. It's war. What is hell? So I went back. The sergeant could see me all sweat. Hey, he said, look at that Jew here, Ruben. He looked like just took a Turkish bed. I said, well, I did more than that. I didn't want to become a hero, because to become a hero is not an easy thing. That was a surge. If he don't send me harm's way, you know, I wouldn't be a hero. I want to show him we can fight and we bleed like anybody else and we die like anybody else. He actually made a hero out of me. For months after his return, the sergeant continued to send Reuben on impossible missions. Each time, he not only survived, but fought brilliantly. And each time, the sergeant deliberately withheld his commendation. In the fall of 1950, Corporal Reuben was severely wounded and was captured by enemy troops. He chose to remain in a POW camp with his American comrades, despite Chinese offers to return him to his native Hungary. In a front line, even it is tough, but you are still a free man. When you become captured, you become a nothing. You don't have absolutely no rights, no human, you're no more a human being. I already had that experience in a German camp. So I look at life different than a person who born here. You know what you're gonna go through, just you don't know how long it's gonna be. Recognizing that starvation was an imminent threat, Reuben repeatedly risked his life to steal food from enemy storehouses and gardens. He provided much needed moral support to frightened and sick soldiers and improvised medical techniques when no conventional supplies were available. One of the guys, Johnny Major, she was very sick. So they, run, they come to me and say, Ruben, Ruben, she have to help. You say, who, is, who I need to help? Johnny is dying. You know, he was already half a day dead. He don't want to eat. He was just giving up. So what I can do? No medicine. So you know what I did? This is mine over body. I went and steal goat shit and lamb shit. It looked like little m, &M. So I went to Johnny Medjeshi, okay? I said, Johnny, Red Cross was just there. He bring us new medication. I will give you some of them, but only one thing I ask you, and that's all. You have to help yourself. Because your parents waiting for you, your brother and sister waiting for you. What's gonna be, Johnny? You want to die or you want to help yourself? So every day, three times I give him three goat shit over a big, and he start coming around, you know? So the big doctor, Dr. Rubinstein, <laughs> feeding that patient with gold shit. He come out of it. I was not just a soldier, not just a funny-talking Jew, I was there when they need me. I feed them, handyman, doctor, nurse, friend. They always say when you save a life, you save maybe a nation. Who knows who become you become? For your guy's life I saved. I proved myself. They realize that, you know, Tiber Rubin is a man. A brother. 
Corporal Tibor Rubin was recommended for the Medal of Honor not once, but four times by his grateful comrades. On September 23rd, 2005, President George W. Bush finally presented the medal to Rubin in a long-awaited ceremony at the White House. I waited 55 years. I said, listen, yesterday I was just a schmuck. Today they call me Sir. As I tell you, I wasn't born here. I wasn't a citizen. I just was a little Jew coming back from the most terrible place and to get a medal of honor, you know, that's a big thing. I never knew that I'm going to be a super Jew. <laughs> that's some joking. I throw a name for you for nothing. No, I'm not super. I'm just a regular guy. I made it. How I made it? The Lord only don't know. I don't even know. Because I was so many times supposed to be die over there, you know, and I'm still here. It's a miracle. It is a God. It is the best country in the world, and I'm part of it now. You know, I don't have to wor worry about the Gestapo or the SS going to knock on my door tonight. You understand what, what this means? I have shalom, peace. People die for it. <laughs>